so glad that we can team up with each other and show these kids how they can have a great time without drugs, without alcohol. And I want you kids to know that you're an influence in life. We all are influences. And sometimes we can be a good influence and sometimes we can be a bad influence. Sometimes, sometimes we can encourage and sometimes we, sometimes we can discourage. I hope that you do more of that encouragement. Because sometimes in life we forget about people that need that. And sometimes we just think about ourselves. I want you to always think about yourself in a way where you want to live a great life, to be a great, good example, to be healthy and all that. But to be someone who wants to reach out to those among you that need examples and need encouragement. When I was just a little bitty fella, my dad was a preacher. He moved every single year until I was in fifth grade. So what happened there was I got to meet a lot of new people. And, and it's, it's tough. You show up to a new school because you want to make an impression. You want to be accepted. You want to be liked. So I found out what it was like to go through life wanting that. And that's, that hasn't changed. It's still in me. I want to be liked and I want to be accepted. I'm going to want to be like no matter how old I get. We all want that acceptance in life. But sometimes we worry so much about it that we want to please people. We want to be like other people. And sometimes we find ourselves making choices to fit in to be like somebody else. Now, I do impressions. I love good other people's voices. I don't do their lifestyles. I don't believe in some of the things that they stand for. I'm not to judge them. I just like doing their voices and not. But I don't want to impersonate other people. I want to be myself. And I think you want to be yourself. But it takes time a lot to figure out who you are. And it all happens during our choices. When we make a mistake, or when we do something really, really good, we, we feel good about it, and we want to do that again. And sometimes people get mixed up about drugs when they talk about feeling good. Because when somebody uses drugs and they get high, they feel a certain way, and the brain will tell them that they want that again. But they want to better high. They want more high. They never stop wanting, and that's why people go to harder and harder drugs. It's like if someone starts off smoking, smoking marijuana, and they may think, well, that's not so bad. I think it's bad. It's what it leads to. It leads to an addiction. But we talk about things that are drugs. We can't look at any of them as being a small thing, because when someone gets high and they experience that, they're going to want to do it again and again and again. So one day, it either kills them, or one day they make a change because they've hurt people. They've hurt their mom and dad. They've hurt people that love them very much. And they don't like that feeling. So they finally figure it out and they want to get help. And you can take somebody who's a drug user, drug addict, and send them away to a hospital to get them help. And they could be away from drugs for a, a number of days and weeks and months. And they're, they're dried out. They're cleaned out. They're not, uh, they're not desiring that drug like they did when they came in. But they're always going to have those flashbacks. And they're always going to know what it's like to be high on a drug. But unless somebody wants to be helped, we can't help somebody. So here's the problem with all this. We've got to realize that it's tough to let go of some things in life to make you feel a certain way. Because a lot of us want pleasure. I know I want pleasure in life, but sometimes we we experience pain to have pleasure in sports. You, you, you run a lot to run fast. You to be able to play football. You have to run those sprints. You've got to do two a days. If you're a wrestler or basketball or whatever, whatever it is, you practice, you work hard, you have pain to experience, you have pain to experience pleasure in those things. When we talk about causing pain in people's lives with drugs, that's, that's, a hard, that's a hard thing to put people through that love you very much. Since I wanted to please people, I wanted to be like uh, people growing up, I had to make my choice as who I wanted to be like, who I wanted to, uh, to uh, you know, imitate or whatever. And that's tough when you're young, because the people that you have around you that you call your friends, sometimes they're trying to encourage you to try something once, do something once, and you know what's wrong. It could be lying or stealing or cheating on a test or whatever it is, and you find yourself tempted and curious and then when you do something wrong, you have that guilt, you have that conscience that weighs on you, and sometimes you know, that's enough right there to stop you from going further and doing something else wrong, you know? But sometimes when we have that uh, support, like this is support right here. 
when we have support in a bad way, we sometimes get comfortable in situations we need to be uncomfortable in. We start to feel like maybe it's okay to do drugs, or maybe it's okay to cheat on tests, or maybe it's okay to uh, steal in a store or drink alcohol because we've got our friends doing it. And we forget about that guilt feeling because we've gotten past that and we feel comfortable. Kids, I want you to always, always be uncomfortable in situations that you know you should be comfortable. Some of y'all are well, what am I supposed to say no to? Okay. You need to say no to things that you know can cause you pain and can cause the ones that you love pain. Because it's, I tell you what, if you love your parents and you love your family, you will do what's right. You will do what's good for you. And I've never taken drugs or ever, ever had a drink of alcohol. Oh, I'm a bitch.